OK, guys, so let's get the party started and we'll swing back 12 years and this will be the main reason why I have no interest in riding motorcycles with anyone and, like I said, 12 years back, I decided I'd swing in and buy myself a motorbike. Now, it had been 40 years since I'd bought a motorbike, so the last bike I had was in 1973, which was a new Suzuki 750 GT. So, between 73 and 2012, never touched motorcycles, and then all of a sudden, I decided I'd come back in and have another crack at one. So the bike in question I bought was a um, really nice looking bike too. It was a uh, Royal Enfield Classic 500 in uh, black and chrome. So it was a really smart looking bike and I don't know, I've got photos of it there somewhere but in those days I wasn't doing videos or anything like that so, you know, it was just photos. So that was alright. Bought the bike and um, just to uh, tell you uh, another story too, like going back in the... Uh, in the early days from 70 73 when i had the motorcycles there i often went on group rides and never had any real drama oh well i actually only had one real drama in those days and that was um when a mate and i went from where i live up to kanamala in queensland and he got a bit tired in the back when he was sitting there and um dropped the sleeping bag in the uh, back wheel and locked up the back wheel and totally uh wiped out the back tire but more importantly both of us got off the bike to, uh, you know, talk about it for another day. So uh, that was the only incident I had then, so that was 40 years earlier. But anyway, bought this bike, pretty happy with it, riding it around. I just happened to know another bloke I used to hang around with at the time, and he had a Harley. And uh, one Saturday morning he said to me, uh, why don't you come over and we'll go for a run somewhere. You can bring your infill along and we'll see how it goes. And I thought to myself, oh yeah, you know, it was fun years back, I'll have a bit of a crack at that. So uh, that's exactly what I did. Yeah, so I filled the uh, tank on the infield and uh, headed off over there, which took around about half an hour to get there. One good thing when I got there, we, you know, all was good. He's very punctual in that line, he was out the front waiting for me to ride. And uh, we were ready to party, so the first thing he said to me, you haven't been riding for a while now, or quite a few years. He said, actually, I've never seen you on a bike. So he said, you lead, I'll follow you. So I thought, oh, well, that's fair enough. So uh, I had no drama there. So uh, I said, we'll go up to such and such and uh, swing right, and then we'll head over there and work our way around. We'll do a um, about 150k loop. So he said, yeah, sure, fine, and let's go. So I got on the infield and must admit, uh, even though I hadn't been on the bike for a while, I had a little bit of vibe that bike and I was getting a bit of tingling in the hands straight off from uh, thinking I'd only been on the bike for probably half hour. But anyway, we're swinging up along the road and I'm there watching him and coming up behind me in the mirrors and sometimes he was sort of straying a little bit close and I, I must admit I felt a bit easy, or should I say not too easy, of him sitting really on my tail because he was sort of only tailing me probably I don't know, 20 feet, 30 feet away. I don't know if he was just looking at the bike or not, but when, you got, when you're riding a bike, it probably weighed 195 kilos, and that Harley looked like, a, I don't know, it was a 1200cc one, so big one, so it probably looked like it weighed double that one, say 400 kilos, and you got somebody tailing you. Uh, I, um, I don't like it in cars, and I definitely didn't like it much on bikes, so I was a little bit concerned about that. So anyway... We just go up along the road and probably about uh, 20 or so minutes up along the road we got to the turn off where I was going to turn right and all of a sudden heard this squeal behind me when I slowed down because I'm doing 50 k's in town and I put the indicators on, turned right and all of a sudden he's almost right on the arse and uh, that close that he had to swerve to avoid him and he come along beside a bit and I look over at him and he's laughing at me. He said, sorry, lost concentration. I was thinking, friggin' lost concentration. Fancy bloody hit by that in my first day out with you. That's what I was thinking at the time. So that was all right. We pulled up a little bit further and I said, stuff this. I said, I'm not bloody leading, you lead. And he was just laughing about it. And uh, he thought it was fairly funny, but honestly, I wasn't laughing at all. Like, uh, I have no urge to be uh, knocked off a bike or anything like that if I could avoid it. But that was all right. He decided he was leading. Now the thing is, he decided to go a little bit quicker than me. He was doing 110 and I was only really running the bike in 
at that stage and I was supposedly only doing 80. So uh, that was a bit of a problem there, but you know, he like, like that, he could have handled it no trouble at all, and I suppose mine could have too, but the fact is when you run something in, you've got to do the right thing by it. Yeah, so he must have realised something was wrong, and uh, even though in the beginning he'd sort of gone right out of the blue horizon, I had no idea where he was. Apparently he'd slowed down, and uh, he was just dropped back to 80 kilometres an hour, and then uh, I think probably we'd been on the bike at that stage probably around about 40, 45 minutes, I saw a roadside rest area come up on the left hand side there and I um, just flashed my lights to him and uh, he got the message and swung over and we just pulled up in the uh, rest area. So we are in the rest area there, I zoom in there and he was in there first and pulled over and uh, stopped. I just pulled over probably about, uh, not real close, probably 10 or 15 feet from him, threw the side stand down and then he walks over to the bike. So. This is a strange one. He walks over to the bike and has a bit of a look at it and uh, take into account he probably weighed uh, maybe 110 kilos, I would say, compared to me at around a bit over 80. Anyway, he comes over to the bike. And I don't know what the bloody idea was, but uh, usually, uh, you know, like most people would either <laughs> look around, squat or something like that, but no, not him. He came over there onto the right hand side of the bike, you know where the foot pegs are, well he didn't decide to park his foot on the foot pegs, he decided to park it on the brake pedal itself. So as soon as he put his bloody 110 kilo weight on the friggin brake pedal, the friggin bike tipped towards me and I'm at the front there near the handlebars just watching him thinking what he was up to and almost toppled the bike over and it was lucky I was there to bloody grab the thing and I'm thinking what a friggin disaster ride this is and I'm probably only halfway through the ride and I was thinking I regret the day I even come over here to even want to go for the bloody ride. By the way, if you like the content, by all means uh, feel free to give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to subscribe to the channel that'd be fine too because I've got roughly five bikes and I ride a variety of them, you know, and put out quite a bit of content. So uh, I'd be happy to see you on board. Now we'll get back to the story here. So. Uh, I gave the Enfield about 10 to 15 minutes to do a heat cycle and cool down a little bit and then we're ready to get into it and continue on on the ride. So he got on his Harley, pressed the button, kicked the Rover, idling away. I got on the Enfield, give it a kick start and I think I kick started on the th third attempt, I think it would have been, second or third attempt because um, the uh, Classic 500, they got a kicker on them and you know, it was just like getting back to the days of 40 years back when the Suzuki had also had a, a Kickstarter on it too. But then he just uh, gives me a signal and points to the tank. And um, I'm looking at my tank and I couldn't see nothing wrong. And he blew the horn and uh, pointed to his tank. So then he shuts his motor off and naturally I turned mine off too. And I said, what's going on? He said, uh, my petrol light's on. I said, what do you mean your petrol light's on? Didn't you get petrol before we go? And he said, no. He said, well, how much have you got? I said, no, I don't know. I filled it up before I left. Oh, he said, we'll be right, but we might take the shortcut to get home. Anyway, he reckons he knows his shortcut, so it's up to me to follow him. I don't know the area all that well, so I just do the right thing and sit on his tail and not as close as what he sat on mine. So... We're heading back along that way, I suppose. Oh, it would be, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes later, we're going along. And then, all of a sudden, his hazard lights come on. And uh, the lights come on just right next to this, or really run-down old weatherboard house sitting right out in the middle of nowhere. So that's OK. He pulls over and he said, uh, I definitely don't want to run my bike now. It's got that. I don't think it had much petrol in it. We'll have some um, yours. And I said, <laughs> Yeah, all right. And I'm thinking to myself, What a FW. And anyone here in Australia knows what an FW is because that's what you'd expect somebody to come out with all the bloody disasters I've had on this day with him. But it gets worse. And that's all right. I said, How do you expect to get the petrol out? He said, uh, We'll swing in here. And he said, I'll go in there and ask him, uh, Could I have a siphon hose? I said, all right, fair enough. So off he trots in there. The front door to the place has got a lock on it, like a gate, so you've got to go down the side of the house and then go around the back. 
So he's in lead and I'm tailing behind him and I'm thinking, oh geez, I don't like this idea much because you never know when you're going to run into a blue or red cattle dog and then, uh, you know, get your, you know, more than your bargain for. So that was all right. We walk down around the back there and he gets there and he um, heads into it and uh, go through the back gate and really gives that back door a really good workout. So it hits it probably half a dozen times, but there's no answer. That's okay. I said, oh, well, it looks like we're out of luck. And then all of a sudden he looks over there onto the fence and on the fence there they've got one of those in Australia use, you often see them. You know, you've got your garden hose coiled up along the side of the fence there and usually on an old Holden or something like that rim and they just wrap the hose around it. And uh, I'm just talking, he said, there's a hose over there. And I said, <laughs> so what? And he said, I'll take a bit of that. I said, oh, you shouldn't be bloody touching that stuff at all. What if the bastard comes along and catches you in here in the first place? I said, and he said, oh, I'm not worried about that. He said, we've got to get the petrol and piss off. So it was all right. In a matter of seconds, he was over there, considering his weight, too, you know, 110 kilos. He moved along fairly well for... Uh, his weight, got over there, brought out this that looked like an old timer pocket knife, sliced four foot of bloody um, hose off that um, hose container there on the fence and then heads back out to me bike. So we're out there and he said oh, I'll just have to borrow a bit of petrol off you. Yeah, I said oh yeah, I said well better make it quick, I'd like to get out of here as quick as we bloody can. So that was all right. He gets there and puts it in siphons. It spills it all over the side of my bike again, down the friggin' side of the cylinder. And no bloody concern at all, like, <laughs> of mine compared to his, naturally, because his is a Harley. But that's all right. He just siphoned the bloody petrol out, and after that, picks up the hose when he's finished, throws it back over to the fence of the place what it was, and kicks his bike over. Now I get on the mine bike then and we get ready to piss off out of there because I didn't want to be caught around there because imagine if somebody come in and found out you'd cut four foot or five foot or so of their bloody ho garden hose off, they, they wouldn't be really what you'd class as happy. So that's all right. He's pissed off down the road and he's moving along with all right and I'm moving down the road and I have to look down and my friggin' petrol light's flashing and he's almost milked my tank. I'm on bloody reserve now all through that FW. So it really is bloody hard to believe this story and this is the reason why I will not, I will never go riding with anyone again and I don't give a stuff who they are, I am not going. So it's, um, you know, I went further on there and I headed back into uh, pretty well close to where he was and in the end I thought, I'll oh, stuff this, I'm going to swing left and head home. And that's exactly what I did. I um, swung left and thought, stuff him. I didn't even tell him I was going home, I just pissed off home through the back area and end up coming down through the airport and back home that way. <coughs> and I was bloody lucky, honestly, to get home. But that was all right. I never heard from him till the next day. And then he said, I'll be in town on Tuesday and I'll fix you up for that petrol. That was all right. Tuesday comes along and sure enough he arrives because when he d does arrive it wasn't the fact that he was coming in to pay me for the petrol the fact is he'd like to come in and have a um, cup of coffee and biscuits for free and that and get out of paying for that you know rather than buy it down the street so that, that was a story in those days now he comes into the house on the Tuesday with wife in tow and we're out there and he's comes out and says, I might just have a bit better look at that bike of yours. He said, it seemed to run all right. And I said, oh yeah. And he said, I'll fix you up for that um, gas I took out of yours. Now I estimated he probably took about nine litres. Now believe it or not, he come to me, and you could tell he was a fairly miserable sort of guy too. He come with a clenched fist and he, he um, grabbed me by the hand and pushed the money into my hand. Now I looked down into my hand and had a look at it and guess what it was? Five friggin' dollars. Five bucks. Five bucks for about eight or nine litres of petrol and all the inconvenience. Now, honestly, if that would have been me, I would at least said, here's 20 bucks.
the cover all the uh, expenses. Sorry about that one. If we ever go for a ride again, I'll make sure I've got petrol in the bloody bike. But I don't know. He gave me five dollars, and I looked at that five dollars, and honestly, apart from being heavily pissed off, I was sort of laughing to myself, and I said to him, "Forget it. It looks like you need the money more than me," and give him his five dollars back. Now, believe it or not. He grabbed that five dollars that friggin' quick and put it back in his pocket. I was thinking afterwards later on, hmm, I don't know if that was a mistake or I should have bloody took his five dollars just for the fact that I took it. So um, that was a bloody lesson I learnt there. So um, before we get on to part two and three where we're going to ride the dirt and the accessories, that's reason I'm pretty sure now you'd have to agree I had a disastrous first run out there on that one. And I've been out now for the last 12 years, and apart from a couple of times when I went a lap around the block with the daughter where, when she had her bike, um, I have never ridden with anyone else, and I have no intentions of riding with anyone else. And that was, you know, more than one could possibly imagine they could go through in just one ride. Okay, guys, I think this clip is sort of pretty well wound up now, and we won't go into the other part where I'm going on the dirt road and telling you uh, some uh, things out along there, plus the um, safety features I would bring along with me to sort of save me a bit of drama there so uh, I think if you're interested uh, in leaving a comment by all means do if you've had an experience similar to this you might even like the comment there whether you think I did the right thing knocking back his five dollars or should I have grabbed that five dollars just for the sake of knowing five was better than nothing so uh, once again thanks for tuning in take a look and uh, I hope you found this a little bit interesting and uh, We'll catch up with you on the next one and by all means if you liked it give it a thumbs up and if you want to subscribe to the channel if you're a newcomer i'll um, have a fair bit more content coming out on this one so i'm pretty sure you'll be interested in at least in this uh, part two one where we ride the dirt and i'll tell you what sort of camera equipment goes along on it and how i go about it film and more importantly why if you were out there filming motorcycle runs and that why you wouldn't want anyone with you so that's fairly interesting too and uh, we'll go from there so once again thanks for tuning in taking a look catch you later